In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this procedural damaged plaster material in Blender. Now, if you'd like to help support me and this channel and purchase the tutorial files, then you can do that over on my Gumroad store, links in the description, and also my patrons over on my Patreon page will have access to the project files. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist if you'd like to check out more procedural tutorials. And then I also want to give a huge thanks to this video's sponsor, Blender Grid. Blender Grid is an easy to use render farm specifically designed for Blender. I've used the service and I highly recommend it. Upload your Blender file or a zip file with the blend file and textures. You can change the render settings on the website before rendering. Blender Grid will let you know the cost before you start the render. You can even choose when you want the render to finish if you're on a tight deadline. While it renders, you can check the rendered frames to make sure everything is rendering properly. Once it finishes, just download the files and compile the frames in a video editor. Use the link in the description to get $20 of render credit on your first render. All right, so real quick, let me just show you what I have set up in the 3D space. So I just added a monkey head and I added a subsurf modifier and shaded it smooth. And then I also added an icosphere and gave it a lot of subdivisions and shaded it smooth. Now for the lighting, I added this plane light right here. So this is just a plane with a subsurf modifier. And then I gave it an emission material so that we have a nice bright light shining on our objects. And then also to get very realistic lighting, I added in this Machine Shop 02 1K HDR, and this is from polyhaven.com, so the link's in the description if you'd like to use the same HDRI lighting that I'm using. And then I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on in this tutorial, so if you don't have that enabled, just go to Edit and then open up Blender's User Preferences, and then if you go to the Add-ons tab, you can just search for Node Wrangler and just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on. All right, so I'm just gonna select this object, I'm just gonna click click on new and I can just call this damaged plaster. And then I can also click right here and I can drag and drop this material onto this object. So to start off, I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture. Let's just drop the Voronoi texture right here and then using the feature from the Node Wrangler add-on, if you have this selected, you can press Control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. Now we don't actually need the mapping, so I can just select the mapping node and press X to delete it. And then if I Control Shift and select different nodes, that is going to preview the node. And again, that's using the Node Wrangler add-on. So I'm going to hold down the Control and Shift key and then select this node to preview it. And I want to use the object coordinate. So if I plug the object into the vector, you can now see that that texture is being placed around the objects more evenly because it's using the object coordinates. Now I want to make these dots a lot smaller. So I'm going to set the scale here to 40 on the Voronoi texture. What we're doing here is we're just creating some little dots and we're just going to use that to give it a little bit more imperfection and make it look a bit more worn and old. So I now want to press shift A and I'm going to search for a Musgrave texture. So this Musgrave grave texture is going to be used as the main texture. So let's just put it under the Voronoi. And then again, if I control shift and select the Musgrave texture, I want to plug the object into the vector. And then I'm going to turn the scale up to 7. And then I also want to turn the detail all the way up to 15 so that it's much more detailed. You can see right in there, it has a lot more detail. And then also I want to turn the dimension down to 0. What this is going to do, it's going to add all this little tiny detail and make it look very rough. Now, this is just black and white right now, and so I want to be able to change the colors and make it look more like plaster. So to do that, I'll press Shift A, and I can search for a color ramp node. So let's just click on this color ramp, and we can just drop this color ramp in here between the viewer and the Musgrave texture. So the height from the Musgrave is going to go into the factor. So we can now just change these colors, and we can also move them around, and that's going to change the colors for the Musgrave texture. So let's first drag this black tab out a little bit, and then I'm going to click on the color slot right down here to change the colors. So for this one, I'm going to make it a bit brighter and I'm going to make it kind of a light brown, kind of a tannish, orangish, brownish color. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, then on this color right here, you can go over to the hex value and you can type in a hex value of a 76736. So that is the exact color that I'll be using. So now I'm going to click on this white tab here and I want to make this color kind of a yellowish color. So I'm going to make it a bit darker and then I'll make it a little bit more towards the yellow. And again, if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, then over here on the hex value, you can type in CC 
9453. So that's the color that I'll be using. So I'm also going to hold down the control key and then I'm going to click right here and that is going to add a new tab. And I'll just bring this tab over to about here. And then this one, I just want it to be a gray color. So I'm going to click right here and I'm going to go to the RGB for red, green, and blue. And I'm going to drag them all to one. So drag all these values to one. I can now just click right up here and I can drag this down and that's going to make it more gray. And then I'm also going to drag it over just a little so that it's a little bit more brown. And again, if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, then over here on the hex value, you can type in a hex value of 9C8981. So we have this color map here and it is looking pretty cool, but I want to add the dot texture in with it. So I want to mix them together. So to do that, I'll press Shift A and I can search for a mix RGB. Let's just drop the mix RGB right here. And so this color ramp is going to be going into color two. And then I want the Voronoi texture to be going into the fact and then I don't want it to be set to mix. I'm going to click right here and I'm going to instead change it to add. Now, if I control shift and click back on this, you can see that these dots aren't very contrasty and I want to make them much more contrasty. So to do that, I'll press shift A. And again, I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to search for a color ramp node. So let's just drop the color ramp node right in here between the distance of the Voronoi and the add. So we'll just drop it right here and then I'm going to control shift and click on it to preview it. So I can take this white tab and I can drag it way over and you can see that it's going to make it much more contrasty. So I'll bring it over to about here. And then on this black one, I can drag this one out a little bit as well. Now, I don't want it to be fully black because that would be a bit too strong. So on the color here, I'm going to just click on this black color and I'm going to drag it up a bit so that it's a much more light brown. So now you can see we have white with some light brown dots. So I can now control shift and click on this and you can see that it isn't really looking that good. It's very white and you can barely see the texture. So to fix this, I'm going to take color one and I'm going to make it be a much more gray color. And for this color, if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, then over on the hex, you can type in 494949. And we can now take the color and we can put that into the base color on the principled. So I can now control shift and select the principled to preview that. All right, now I also want this map here to affect the roughness. So we're going to take the color and we're going to put that into the roughness as well. Now it's way too shiny right now and damaged plaster wouldn't look that shiny. So I'm just going to box select these nodes and press G to grab. We're just going to bring them over a little bit. That way I have room to add a color ramp right in here. So I'll press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp. Let's just click on the color ramp and we're going to drop it right in here. So it's going from the color through the roughness. So now we can change the colors of the color ramp and that's going to change the roughness. So if I click on the black tab, I can click on the color right here. And as I start to turn this up and as I start to make it more white, you can see that it's much more rough. If I drag this way up here, very white. You can see now it looks very chalky and dry, but then if I drag it down, it's more shiny. So I don't want to bring it up too high, but I will bring it up to something like this. So you can see now it's a bit more rough and it will also look more rough when we add more stuff into the normal to give it some bump. And speaking of bump, I do want to add a bunch of noise all over the object. So let's do that. So I'm first going to take the color and I'm going to put the color into the normal, but you can see that something isn't right here. There's some weird shading issues. There's some weird glitches right there. That is because we need to convert this to normal data because this is color data, but this is normal data. So to convert it, we're going to press shift A and we are going to search for a bump node and let's drop the bump node right in here. So the color is going into the height. We actually want the color to be going into the height on the bump and then the normal can go into the normal. So now if you zoom in here, you can see we've converted that to normal data and so now it looks nice and bumpy. So that is looking better, but I also want to add some noise over the entire thing. So to do that, I'm going to press shift A. Let's go to the search and I'm going to search for a noise texture. So let's click on the noise texture and I'm going to drop it under the Musgrave. And then let's also control shift and select it to preview it. And again, I want to plug the object up to the vector so it's placed on the objects more evenly. So on this noise texture, let's change the scale to a seven so it's a bit smaller. And then I also want to make it more detailed so let's turn the detail level all the way up to 15 so it's very detailed. Now I want this to be affecting the bump as well. So we're going to take this bump node and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and we're going to drop it down here. Now because this has already been converted to normal data, the normal can go through the normal. So we now have this height value that we can add data into. So let's take the factor of the noise texture and we're going to plug that into the height. And then I can control shift and select the principal BSDF to preview the final thing. 
Now that is very strong and I want to make it less strong. So on the strength here on the second bump, I'm going to turn the strength down to like a 0.2 and that way it's still there. You can definitely see it, but it's much more subtle. Now I can also use this noise texture to create the damaged parts. So what I'm going to do is press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp and let's just drop the color ramp right down here. And then I can control shift and select it to preview it. So now what I can do is I can take the factor and I can put the factor into this color ramp. And now what we can do is we can play around with these values to make it more contrasty. So I'm going to bring them together so they're actually really close. And so you can see now that I've dragged these together really close, you can see that we basically created a mask and we can use this mask to tell the material where it's going to look damaged. So where there's going to be little holes and broken pieces in the plaster. So let's first add this color ramp data into the final base color. So let's press shift A and I'm going to search for another mix RGB because I want to mix this data in with this data. So we want to add this to the color data. So I'm going to take the mix and I'm going to put it right here after this ad right before it goes into the base color. So I can now control shift and click on this to preview it. So I can now take this color right here from this color ramp and I can put the color into the factor. And then I actually want to take this wire from the ad and I want to put that into color two. That way it's going to flip it. So now you can see color one is going to be where those holes are. So I'm now going to take color one and I'm going to make that a bit darker and I'm also going to make it kind of a brownish color. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using over on the hex, I'm going to be using a value of 716057. So you can see now where the plaster is damaged, it looks kind of a grayish brownish. So let's control shift and click on this to preview the final thing so far. Now, if you zoom in here, you can see that actually doesn't look very realistic. And that is because those damaged parts aren't going in. So I want this mask right here to be going into the bump. So it looks like it's going back in. So to do that, I'm going to click on this bump node and I'll press shift D that will duplicate it. And I'm going to drop it right here. So again, this has already been converted to normal data, so it can be transferred through to the normal. So we now have this height right here that we can add data into. So let's take this color on the color ramp and we're gonna plug that into the height. And then just control shift and select the principle to preview the final material. Now it's not really doing much and that is because it isn't actually very strong. So I'm gonna turn the strength up and you can see when I turn the strength up now, it looks like it's going in quite a bit. And specifically, I think a strength value of 0.35 looks pretty good. All right, so this material is starting to look very cool, but there is one more thing that I want to do. I want to add some little cracks around the material. So to do that, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for another noise texture. So let's just drop this noise texture right down here. I'm also going to press shift A and I'm going to search for another Voronoi texture and we can just drop the Voronoi right down here. And then let's control shift and select it to preview it. And then again, I want to take the object and I want to put that into the vector of the Voronoi and we'll use this noise texture in a moment. Now to make this look more like cracks, I'm going to click on the F1 and I'm going to change it to distance to edge. And when we do that, now you can see we have all these little black lines that look like cracks. Now it doesn't look very organic right now because the cracks are so sharp. So that is where the noise texture comes in. So I'm actually going to use the noise texture data to distort the Voronoi texture. So if we take this noise texture and we put it right here, we can actually put it in front of the Voronoi. So the noise texture is going to affect the vector and so it's going to distort the Voronoi texture. And then I'm going to turn the scale on the noise texture to a 1.5. And then I'll also turn the detail all the way up to 15, which is the max, so it's very detailed. So now we're getting a map that looks really cool and it looks like we have all these little cracks and it's very detailed. Now I wanna make it more contrasty because I don't want those cracks to be that big, that's way too big. So I'll press shift A and I'm gonna search for a color ramp Let's click on the color ramp and we can drop it right in here after the Voronoi. So if we start to drag these values together, it's going to make it more contrasty. So I can just click on the white tab and I can drag the white tab very close. And you can see when I do that, it's now making those cracks very thin. So I'm gonna drag the white tab very, very close just so that those cracks are very thin. So we now have a really cool map here. So now I just need to plug this into the final material. So I want the cracks to look like they're bumping in. So I'm gonna plug this into the normal. So again, I'm gonna select this bump node and I'll press shift D to duplicate it. Let's just drop it right here. So now we can take this color and we can put it into the height. So now if I control shift and click on the final material, let's just zoom in here. You can start to see those little cracks. Now they are a little bit subtle right now. So I'm going to turn the strength value up. And when I turn the strength value up, now you can see those cracks are much stronger, but I don't want them to be too strong. So I'm just going to turn the strength to like a 0.4 and that way you can still see them, but they're not too strong. And then also if you want to change the size of 
of them, you can play around with this value. So you can see as I start to bring this away, those cracks are looking bigger. You can also drag the black tab out, um, but I prefer to bring the black tab all the way over here and then just bring these pretty close. And that way the cracks stay pretty small. And that is it. So that is the final material. So I'll just give this a final render. So there we have it. There is the final material. There is the procedural damaged plaster. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you so much for watching. And again, if you'd like to help support me and this channel, you can purchase the procedural material on my Gumroad store and you can also get it if you join my Patreon. And those are both really great ways to help support this channel. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more procedural materials and to watch more procedural material tutorials, I have a playlist where you can check out all of my procedural material tutorials. All of the links are in the description. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in a future tutorial.